really excited to work with Hydra because it's an animal that's so different from the animals that we typically work with in the lab and then they're so different from us. And so then you might ask, well, why are we studying something that's so different from humans? What does that mean for me? Uh, what I think is really interesting about working with Hydra and its relationship to, to humans is that by looking at similarities in the way that Hydra's nervous system works and the way that a mouse or a human's nervous system works, we can understand really deep principles that are conserved from perhaps the very first nervous systems in nature. Um, and that is really, I think, the fundamental building blocks upon which all nervous systems are built, including our own. So we wanted to kind of understand how this animal responds to mechanical touch, and these things are really tiny. We need to make something that's small enough so we could stimulate a very specific part of the animal and not the whole animal at once, so we could understand how it responds to this, this light touch. The lead author on this, Krishna Bodhiwala, went to the clean room, and she built these microfluidic devices that have a bunch of valves. You can see here there are nine valves in a chamber that could house one of these animals. In this case, we're going to show you one valve. You see when it turns on right there? That's when we're applying a stimulus. And so you can see in, in this image here, this animal has a protein in all of the neurons. And so essentially, we can watch the activity in all of the neurons. And when those neurons are active, that neuron will get brighter. And what we'll look for is we'll look for when we touch the animal, what does that nervous system do? How does it encode that sense of touch? And what I think is interesting about this is that you'll see there's not a lot of structure, right? These neurons are kind of everywhere, but maybe there are specific groups of neurons that are responsible for driving this animal's behavior. You see right there, there's a valve, and you actually see a bright ring of neurons at the bottom. And we'll do the same thing with the muscle cells, and you'll see right when the valve hits, these muscles respond, and that shows me that the animal is contracting. And you see, each time that we apply a stimulus, we get that same kind of pattern of activity in the, in the neurons and in the muscle cells. What it allows us to do is go back and look at these pictures where it looks like there's not a lot of structure, that this nervous system might be kind of random and it doesn't have the centralization that we see in animals like rats and mice and humans. But what we discovered is that despite what looks like a distributed network, there are groups of cells that form these structures that are responsible for computing things like uh, response to touch and computing things like uh, controlling the animal's movements. These animals can self-renew their entire nervous system. They can live forever because they're, they're regrowing every neuron in their body every 20 days. You can cut their head off, they regrow a new head. You can cut their foot off, they regrow a new foot. So these remarkable regenerative abilities, if we could understand them, we might be able to learn how we might be able to improve our own treatment of humans and how they might recover from injuries like traumatic brain disorder or stroke.